When all was ordered, the captains rode forth towards the Black Gate with a great guard of horsemen and a banner and heralds and trumpeters. There was Gandalf as chief herald, and Aragorn with the sons of Elrond, and Ymir of Rohan and Imrahil, and Legolas and Gimli and Peregrin were bidden to go also, so that all the enemies of Mordor should have a witness. They came within cry of the Moranen, and unfurled the banner, and blew upon their trumpets, and the heralds stood out, and sent their voices up over the battlement of Mordor. Come forth! Let the Lord of the Black Land come forth! Justice shall be done on him, for wrongly he has made war upon Gondor, and wrested its lands. Therefore the King of Gondor demands that he should atone for his evils, and depart then forever. Come forth! There was a long silence, and from wall and gate no cry or sound was heard in answer. But Sauron had already laid his plans, and he had a mind first to play these mice cruelly before he struck to kill. So it was that, even as the captains were about to turn away, the silence was broken suddenly. There came a long rolling of great drums like thunder in the mountains, and then a braying of horns that shook the very stones and stunned men's ears. And thereupon the middle door of the black gate was thrown open with a great clang, and out of it there came an embassy from the dark tower. At its head there rode a tall and evil shape, mounted upon a black horse, if horse it was, for it was huge and hideous, and in the sockets of its eyes and in its nostrils there burned a flame. The rider was robed all in black, and black was his lofty helm, yet this was no ring wraith, but a living man. The lieutenant of the Tower of Barad-dûr he was, and his name is remembered in no tale, for he himself had forgotten it. I am the mouth of Sauron. But it is told that he was a renegade, who came of the race of those that are named the Black Numenorians. And he entered the service of the Dark Tower when it first rose again, and because of his cunning he grew even higher in the Lord's favour, and he learned great sorcery, and knew much of the mind of Sauron, and he was more cruel than any orc. He it was that now rode out and with him came only a small company of black harnessed soldiery, and a single banner, black, but bearing on it, in red, the evil eye. Now halting a few paces before the captains of the west, he looked them up and down, and laughed. Is there anyone in this route with authority to treat with me? Or indeed with wit to understand me? Not thou, at least. It needs more to make a king than a piece of elvish glass, or a rabble such as this. Why, any brigand of the hills can show as good a following. Aragorn said naught in answer, but he took the other's eye and held it, and for a moment they strove thus. But soon, though Aragorn did not stir nor move hand to weapon, the other quailed and gave back as if menaced with a blow. I am a herald and ambassador, and may not be assailed. Where such laws hold, it is also the custom for ambassadors to use less insolence. But no one has threatened you. You have not to fear from us until your errand is done. But unless your master has come to new wisdom, then with all his servants you will be in great peril. So... Then thou art the spokesman, old Greybeard. Have we not heard of thee at whiles, and of thy wanderings, ever hatching plots and mischief at a safe distance? But this time thou hast stuck out thy nose too far, Master Gandalf, and thou shalt see what comes to him who sets his foolish webs before the feet of Sauron the Great. 
I have tokens that I was bidden to show thee. To thee in especial, if thou shouldst dare to come. Indeed, I know them all. But why do you bring them here? Dwarf coat. Elf cloak. Blade of the downfallen west. And spy from the little rat land of the Shire. Nay, do not start. We know it well. Here are the marks of a conspiracy. Now, maybe he that bore these things was a creature that you would not grieve to lose. And maybe otherwise. One dear to you, perhaps. If so, take swift counsel with what little wit is left to you. For Sauron does not love spies, and what his fate shall be depends now on your choice. Good, good, he was dear to you, I see. Or else his errand was one that you did not wish to fail? It has. And now he shall endure the slow torment of years, as long and slow as our arts in the Great Tower can contrive, and never be released. Unless maybe when he is changed and broken, so that he may come to you, and you shall see what you have done. This shall surely be, unless you accept my lord's terms. Name the terms. These are the turns. The rabble of Gondor and its deluded allies shall withdraw at once beyond the Anduin. First taking oaths never again to assail Sauron the Great in arms open or secret. All lands east of Anduin shall be Sauron's forever solely. West of the Anduin, as far as the Misty Mountains and the Gap of Rohan, shall be tributary to Mordor, and men there shall bear no weapons, but shall have leave to govern their own affairs. But they shall help to rebuild Isengard, which they have wantonly destroyed. And that shall be Sauron's, and there his lieutenants shall dwell. Not Saruman, but one more worthy of trust. This is much to demand for the delivery of one servant, that your master should receive in exchange what he might else fight many a war to gain. Or has the field of Gondor destroyed his hope in war so that he falls to haggling? And if indeed we rated this prisoner so high, what surety have we that Sauron, the base master of treachery, will keep his part? Where is this prisoner? Let him be brought forth and yielded to us, and then we will consider these demands. <laughs> Do not bandy words in your insolence with the mouth of Sauron. Surety you crave. Sauron gives none. If you sue for his clemency, you must first do his bidding. These are his terms. Take them or leave them. These we will take. He suddenly cast aside his cloak and a white light shone forth like a sword in that black place. Before his upraised hand, the foul messenger recoiled and Gandalf coming seized and took from him the tokens, coat, cloak and sword. These we will take in memory of our friend but as for your terms, we reject them utterly. Get you gone, for your embassy is over, and death is near to you. We did not come here to waste words in treating with Sauron, faithless and accursed, still less with one of his slaves. Be gone. The messenger of Mordor laughed no more. His face was twisted with amazement and anger to the likeness of some wild beast that, as it crouches on its prey, is smitten on the muzzle with a stinging rod. Rage filled him, and his mouth slavered, and shapeless sounds of fury came strangling from his throat. But he looked at the fell faces of the captains and their deadly eyes, and fear overcame his wrath. He gave a great cry and turned, leaped upon his steed, 
and with his company galloped madly back to Sirith Gorgor. But as they went, his soldiers blew their horns in signal long arranged, and even before they came to the gate, Sauron sprang his trap. <laughs>